hasn't necessarily always been very friendly in the past to me. Crazy Farage must be stopped being just one of the tweets uh, that Mr Chen's put out. Nigel Farage is Trump's puppet, a big joke in Europe. But that's OK. Uh, you know, I mean, Wei Wa Chen is China Daily's EU bureau chief. And whilst we may have had some quite bitter disagreements in the past, we here at GB News are a beacon of free speech and open debate. So, Mr Chen, I'm going to welcome you to the programme. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Now, it would appear that the Chinese government was completely blindsided by this deal. And they've said some pretty tough things. They've said that it shows an obsolete Cold War mentality. They've said it's extremely irresponsible. They've said it's narrow-minded. And they've actually said that Australia has now turned itself into an adversary of China. What are they so scared of? Well, first I have to say, when you said, talking about my tweets, actually you didn't say it's in response to your tweets and you didn't tell the audience what your tweets were about. But anyway, that's no, part of it. With respect, my tweets were never personal. My tweets were criticism okay. of some of the okay, things that the Chinese government has done not... with, with the Uyghur Muslims and others. So, so d just to give some fair context. OK, on thank you. Christmas uh, cancelled, you said. Anyway. Uh, I did. I would say this is a very provocative move of yesterday for but surprise or no surprise, you say, because after four years of Donald Trump and Pompeo with all the disruption, provocation, so China has experienced enough of those, you know, uh, confrontation from the United States, so whether trade war, tech war, you know, whether uh, in the South China Sea. And uh, the yesterday, I, I personally see, you know, that if you look at the timing, as you mentioned, it's really to cover up for the debacle uh, in Afghanistan with Joe, and which it's not just uh, uh, in the United States, uh, uh, whether it's not just Republican, it's also some Democrats who uh, are criticized by Biden. It's also U.S. allies. I mean, in U.K., I mean, you're a politician. Uh, Prime Minister Johnson had to fire someone, too. No, no, no. And I, uh, look, 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 you look. Too. I, I will agree with you. I will agree with you that the withdrawal from Afghanistan was a complete fiasco, very badly handled, um, and has led to some tensions um, amongst Western alliances. But what was launched last night was a completely new structure with the US, the UK and Australia getting together to make sure that Australia in that part of the world has a really efficient submarine fleet. And let's be frank, the leaders may not have mentioned it, but this is in response to a growing militarism in China. OK, your previous guest uh, and you talked about uh, military resistance. Let's uh, get the facts. China's uh, military spending is only a fraction of the United States, that of the United States. U.S. spend more than the next 10 countries combined. And China spend, like, uh, if I remember correctly, it's only 1.7% of its GDP. Actually, it's below the NATO threshold. Your so, Navy, your I Navy in particular, your Navy is growing very quickly every year. And let me explain to you what we're really scared of. You know, what we're really worried about is Taiwan. We're worried uh, that a country that seeks to be independent, that seeks to govern itself, finds itself under increasingly bellicose statements coming from the Chinese government. And we're worried, we're worried that your navy and your army may well go and try and take it. Let's uh, correct you first. If you read the British government document, Taiwan is not a country, OK? Let's be uh, honest about that. Uh, so well, unless you disagree are. with your government, that's a personal view. But let's also be honest uh, that uh, how many provocations uh, uh, done uh, towards, uh, you know, in, on the Taiwan Strait by the Trump administration to change the status quo. And the Chinese actually government has been quite consistent. They want to use peaceful means and the f using force is the last resort until Taiwan well, goes into... Well, well, using force using force for us will be the last resort. I can absolutely promise you of that. But we do see... I mean, these statements 
do show us, as, you know, that, 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 that Beijing is rattled. Um, can I just finally ask you one question about Hong Kong, uh, which is a subject uh, that is very dear uh, to the hearts of many people in the United Kingdom through historic links and family links. I mean, it seems that you are, not you personally, but your government, um, and you do work for a state media organisation, that you seem to be intent on destroying any element of democracy in Hong Kong whatsoever. Why are you doing that? Surely better to let Hong Kong flourish. Actually, you know, when you look at the facts today, Hong Kong has stabilized. Would you rather see Hong Kong street rights cocktail, um, Molotov cocktail uh, being no. a spot being thrown every day? And uh, actually, you look at the Hong Kong police behavior. They are so much more restrained than, you know, how U.S. police, New York police, NYPD deal with protests there. I was there uh, ob observing the Occupy Wall Street, and it was horrible. And you look at the Black Lives Matter. You look at, the, actually, oh, even the French look, police. Look, look, I, don't want to see, the I don't want to see violence on any streets. Of course I don't. What I'm talking about is the closing down of a free press, because that is what's been going on. Actually, if you look at the read of the Hong Kong press, I actually, if you just read the South China Morning Post, you see how actually it uh, has a lot of articles. I mean, even today, if you read it, critical of both the local government or central government, it's quite free, actually. Well, so I okay. don't think we I read agree. every Hong Kong newspaper. We will agree to disagree, but we've had a civilized conversation, and I thank you for coming on and giving us your point of view. So there you have thank it. You. Both sides of an argument, which you get here on GB News. Um, there is no way, there is no way that this deal with Australia uh, is in any way threatening to China or making us a direct adversary of China. What it is saying to China is, we will not allow you to walk all over other countries' territory. Um, and I think we are perhaps reminded in some ways that perhaps we could have acted sooner in the 1930s against an autocratic power that uh, started to take other pieces of territory. And by the time we did something, 